Welcome to The Hollywood Outsider, an award-winning weekly entertainment podcast. On this episode, we finally, finally, finally have a blockbuster movie to discuss. Ancient enemies together again to have a straight-up wrestling match on land and sea. The only cage match we needed to see this year. And the movie that might, might, might have just saved movie theaters. So strap into your heaves and get ready to talk about Godzilla vs. Kong. It's time yeah. to save Mothra. <laughs> that joke's getting old, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. All right, my name's Aaron Peterson. I'll be your host. Joining me today are my fellow hosts, John Davenport. Hey, uh, just for in case anyone was wondering, I'm Team Godzilla. Man to sink. Hello, hello. Just so everybody's wondering, I am Team Godzilla, not by choice, but by marriage. God, you just, it's like part of suffrage. What? What are we talking? About? <laughs> Yeah, the whole movie. I was like, "Oh, Kong, Kong," and then I was like, "Don't say this out loud." <laughs> well, I am Team Kong because he won. I already saw the movie, so I know who won. So there you go. But did he? Did he really? Or did Godzilla? I mean, I feel like they both got kind of their own little victories here. Would you agree? Yeah, it was more Kong's movie, but yeah, they both got their their victories. Out Godzilla of this. beat more ass, though. That's true. Godzilla's got the advantage. I mean, as soon as this halitosis starts firing up, boosh. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. you could drill straight into hollow earth <laughs> with that the whole time. <laughs> Who needs a tunnel that's been expertly designed when you got Godzilla pissed off? Well, how do we know it wasn't Godzilla that made those tunnels, huh? Yeah, ah. they just they just asked, hey, hey, guy, can you come up to Antarctica for five? We just need you to boosh a hole through here. Right. I get it. Well, before we get into monkey versus lizard, I do want to ask you guys, because... I mean, this is a not a monkey. Whatever, ape. This uh, this blockbuster deal where Netflix is dropping four hundred million for two Knives Out sequels that will, and the money fluctuates. It's four hundred fifty. It's four hundred. Whatever it is, it's at least four hundred million dollars for two Knives Out sequels that will reunite Ryan Johnson and Daniel Craig. That's a lot of money, and I'm just kind of curious if you guys are are taken aback by that kind of deal, and is it just desperation from Netflix at this point? I don't think anyone would actually throw around four million dollars or four hundred million dollars in desperation. I think they would throw out that kind of money for quality. So, and Netflix has, like anybody else, has had quality go up and down over the years, and it's just going to. To me, this is just a sign of more more good things coming to Netflix. Yeah, I think it's really just a reflection of how much people loved the first movie and them trying to grab onto it because it did so well and they have so much opportunity to continue with the success with Ryan Jen- Johnson and Daniel Craig still at the helm of things, the face of it. I hope he does a different accent for every movie. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> that would be really cool. I hope he does like Australian in the next one. That's what I hope happens. Well, remember, you can always find more information at thehollywoodoutsider.com. Join our Facebook group or on Twitter at Buy Popcorn. But let's get into Godzilla versus Kong. I feel like I should be beaten against my chest when I do this. Okay, guys. You might hurt yourself. I already <laughs> sting a little bit. Yeah. John, first up, because Amanda apparently can't answer this because she's, uh, she's obligated to like kaiju. You mm-hmm, mm-hmm. won't shut up about it. You've been more excited about this than I think, I don't know, anything ever. So why why do you like ki- giant kaiju movies so much? Well, I, I've, you know, I've been thinking about this question a lot because while well, we get the questions up ahead of the show and I don't, I don't really know exactly how to answer it besides going... There's a bit of fantasy that uh, mixed with reality that I, that I enjoy with them. Uh, it's kind of like wrestling in the sense of, especially when, come, when you have like two big names battling out, it's kind of like wrestling. You know it's fake, you know it's all put on, but you just can't stop watching how awesome it looks the entire time. Mm-hmm. And it's the excitement in which you get to live in in those moments. So yeah, that's why I like it. Really that simple. Yeah. But you're, you're more uh, akin to Godzilla. Is it because he's got the, the the halitosis. He's got the 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 mouth gonorrhea. Is that why you like him so much? Because he got laser breath. Well, uh, Godzilla was something that was handed to me by my older brother. Because my older brother is a big fan of Godzilla. He was always a big uh, big G fan. And 
And I kind of got my Godzilla fan- fandom from him in that respect. But also, Godzilla is the f- like one of the first evidences of how fun it is to enjoy an anti-hero. He's not necessarily a hero. He's not necessarily a bad guy. He just shows up and he does whatever he has to show up to do this, to do whatever he has to do. Sometimes he steps on people. Sometimes he goes after the big monster that's you know pissing him off. You know, and it's just it's just simple. <laughs> Sometimes he senses robotics. Who knew? Who knew that was capable of Godzilla? Yeah. Now it's a new thing we know. All right. Well, first, John, why don't you? I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. You said you only like thing or you're sided because of your affiliation <laughs> to your husband. Do you like kaiju yeah. movies in general? Or? No, no, okay. I don't. No, okay. no, no, no. So that's why I feel like I really want to emphasize: I am not somebody who genuinely, in general, gets invested into monster bad fight that's just not anything that i've ever been really interested in and so i don't really the battles are cool in movies but i just don't have a draw in for it i think i finally became a little bit more interested in godzilla as a character once i understood a little bit more about what he represents that started to change things for me when i was like oh okay so he's the representation of what it means when humanity dabbles and does things too much and and has too much control and the, the effect that that can have mm-hmm. in creating a water monster <laughs> a otherwise water, <laughs> water monster yeah All right. otherwise we- i don't care about kaiju movies like i just don't but this movie was really good i really liked it it had enough story and heart in it for me to get invested easy, and care easy about the characters on the story easy no no i'm saying like the heart <laughs> the heart in the story because the story yeah, revolves around kong and this kind of revolves around the little girl too like his his humanity is really shown and so then i'm like okay i'm obviously invested if i'm crying so then i cared uh see i just like i like rock em, sock em robots and this is just Rock 'em, suck 'em, <laughs> kaiju. You know, I. It's just monsters kicking another monster. It, 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 to me, these movies are the equivalent of when I was a little kid and I had action figures and I would just slam them up against each other and see which one would break first. <laughs> <laughs> that's the equivalent it is for me. So, see, I never had that. <laughs> there you go. I mean, maybe that, maybe that's uh, what the joy is there for, for for John and I especially, but. I, I just I just love that aesthetic. I didn't even know they had stories until you just told me. I mean, really, I'm, I'm still debating this one. <laughs> Usually one. they don't. Yeah. But I mean, I could there's some fun stuff to pick apart in this movie. I could tell you that like all that radioactive breath flying everywhere. Why is no one having a problem with that? Why aren't their insides <laughs> liquefied? I don't understand, but they seem perfectly fine. But that's you just got to let it go. You just got to let it go. You know, that's a good point. They didn't show a lot of the casualties of these two. You saw the well, infrastructure They evacuated the city. Didn't you hear that important piece of information from Lance Reddick? <laughs> well, yeah, you know, because the last time they let some superhero or something destroy a city, people were like, this is stupid because they've destroyed the city. Yeah. How could you destroy the city? And People got hurt. It's a stupid movie. <laughs> they did have a totally... Batman versus Superman scene. You saw that, right? Where they're like going yeah, back totally. and forth. I'm like, just say Mothra. Just just yeah. say it. I don't care. <laughs> just say it. Yeah. All right, we're getting ahead of ourselves. John, why don't you catch us up on where this film starts off with a bit of what happened in the previous three films that led to this one? Let's... All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do this chronologically for everybody. So oh boy. In, in 1973, a bunch of explorers head to a never-before-seen island, and that island is Skull Island. Some of the explorers are there to look for minerals and ore, yet others are there to find evidence of titans and this whole hollowed earth idea. They meet a young titan, because he's only about 100 feet when they meet him in 1973. His name is King Kong, and he seems to be a benevolent protector to the people of that island. And it's, it's interesting and fun that way, I guess. Then we jump forward to 2014. Two Titans are spawned. They break containment, which alerts the whole world to the idea that Titans exist. And they're running around, running amok, and Godzilla shows up. He makes short of them, and then he like is the big hero and dives back into the ocean after like sleeping it off a little bit in the middle of San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> we never see that fight, right? Is that the fight we see, or is that no? Hawaii is the one where we don't see it. They just put yeah. It on we the don't, we see that one on the TV screen. Still in pissed Hawaii. about that. Yeah. 
Um, then in 2017, a fringe group of radicalized environmentalists, I'm going to say that again, radicalized environmentalists, <laughs> decide it's a great idea to partner up with a scientist who's created a, a device that can awaken and kind of sort of control titans to a degree. And they think, hey, let's do this. Let's let's wake up the biggest, scariest damn thing we can think of, and that's King Ghidorah, who is also called Monster Zero, who they also hint to being an alien monster, not of this Earth. And Godzilla has to show up, and he takes up his lickings every now and again, but ultimately he wins that fight. And then we move on to three years later, where it's Kong versus Godzilla. Or Godzilla versus Kong, depends on how you like it. And the... Um... Monster Zero, the heads, the head in this movie is uh, saved from one of those three heads from that monster. Right. It was one of the ones that Godzilla ripped off in one of the first fights. So Amanda, take a shot. What's the overall plot of Godzilla versus Kong? Aside from monsters fight, Godzilla attacks an Apex cybernetics lab in Florida, which scares humans on Earth. Dr. Lind and Apex work together to find a way into Hollow Earth, led by Kong, featuring cute little kid and Dr. Andrews, to capture the radiation, <laughs> which kid. could give humans a fighting chance against Godzilla. Of course, no one knows about Mecha Godzilla except Godzilla. So chaos ensues, battles begin, and billions of dollars of infrastructure are caught in the middle. Oh, that reminds me. Thanks, thanks for bringing up Mecha Godzilla. John, remember like a many episodes back when you told us about Mecha Godzilla was going to be in this movie because you yeah you hinted at it and you said it's definitely not a spoiler because you know it's not because there's no way I was gonna I I didn't think there was gonna be any way I could be right yeah thanks for spoiling that because <laughs> saw that coming a mile away thanks to also John a Davenport. few episodes ago that was like a year ago yeah whatever no whatever it was it just I'm still mad about it because the whole time I'm like eh, it's gonna be Mecha Godzilla it's gonna be God. Damn it. It's a fucking Godzilla. <laughs> so, so before we get into the next part, I want to ask you guys, in the incredible title sequence, I loved it. Like, I'm not being sarcastic. Were that was really any cool. Of you, that was very cool. Yeah. But were any of you wondering what they were, what the words were around the names that they were blacking out? It was like stripped out. Oh, no. Because well, I took 30 minutes to decipher it for you all. Why? Oh, did you? Why? <laughs> Because I wanted to know what it said, because it seemed like it was so cool that Wingard put this in here, and it goes so fast that you cannot, I mean, you have to like, play, pause, play, pause, play, pause, just you know so you what? can capture the right second. I'm sold. You did the work. Let's hear it. What do you got? <laughs> okay, so the history of Titan words will be explored in a film by Adam Wingard that sheds light on previously hidden truths. Alexander Skarsgård needs to prove prove existence to hollow earth to salvage his tarnished reputation the inclusion of millie bobby brown will aid greatly in the quest rebecca hall has done extensive research that is indispensable to the mission untold secrets will be exposed by brian tyree henry and fellow truth seekers shun Agori, the connections between hollow earth and monster sightings has long been established list explorers have attempted to prove the connection isa gonzalez and many have perished. And I'm leaving the, the names in there just so you know how it was listed. Julian Dennison, Hollow Earth husband rumored since earliest historical record. There are shadowy figures, Lance Reddick, who invisibly navigate these <laughs> liminal realms. Working in concert with Kyle Chandler, they hope to bring the monsters into the light. Huh. There are many factors, including advancements in technology and Damien Bashir. Citing works of ancient alien theorists, Hakim K. Kazim has worked in conjunction with Kaylee Hoddle to establish a controversial narrative. Commonly held beliefs are subject to doubts casting by Sarah Haley Finn CSA, which undermine progress. Working from skeletal remains, costume designer and fully fleshes out renderings of monsters' appearance. Visual effects supervisor John D- DJ Dis Jardin and creates simulacra of titans based on existing evidence. If I'm saying these things wrong, I'm sorry. I promise you, you're not saying them right. Thank you. An Atomic Blast is a visual effects producer, the likes of which Tamara Watts Kent had never seen. The explosive energy demolished structures with sound design, and radiation reached as far as Eric Adal and the lone fishing boat of Ethan Van Der Rin. The monster's sounds are compared to music by Tom Holkenborg, which I think is kind of funny. 
The record of monster clashes is edited by Josh Schaefer, Ace, to reflect ongoing battles. The military has increased spending to support production designers Owen Patterson, Thomas S. Hammock as they gear up for intensified battles with monsters. The most dramatic battles were captured by director of photography Ben Saracen, ASC, BSC. The most compelling footage was suppressed. Hmm. Increased activity necessitates rebuilding. Executive producers Jay Ashenfelter and his cohort Herbert W. Gaines do the work. Executive producers Dan Lin and his ally Roy Lee control information that makes it to the public. Khan's powers, Kong's powers fascinates and intrigues executive producers Yoshimitsu Bano and Kenji Okahiro, so they study his anatomy. In data produced by Thomas Tull, studied by John Joshney, Brian Rogers is able to track Kong's progress. Reports of monster rampages produced by Mary Parent, PGA, are expurgated by Alex Garcia, PGA, with Eric McLeod, Leoid, to allay public fears. The ability to track monsters is based on the character Godzilla, leaving a wake of destruction across proper- properties owned and created by Toho Corporation Limited. Evidence is plentiful, but a cover story by authorities seeks to protect Terry Rocio and Michael Doherty and implicate underground groups and Zack Shields in the recent increase in Titan activity. Reality is stranger than anything in a screenplay by a raving lunatic and makes Eric Pearson and Max Borenstein seem credible by comparison. Directed by Adam Wingard to cease investigations. Dear God, what started as a really clever (laughs) in-joke went way too long. It was very long. (laughs) Yeah. Both you and them. I don't... don't (laughs) (laughs) But that's interesting. At least, I mean, it all has, it all has more to it. I, I kind of wasn't even looking at it. I just, I just assumed I'm like, oh, that's some cool stuff. I don't need to know. I was looking more at the newspaper headlines and things like that. I just in the prior Godzilla footage and Kong footage and all that, which was cool. Right. But I was like, I, I feel like there's, I felt like there was some sort of a hint in there. So I wanted to investigate and do all of the work. Mm. Which Internet took a long sleuths, time. I like it. Well, I'm glad you did because I wouldn't. So. Let's take on the story. We're going to go through the characters, starting with the humans, the smartest of all of them. Nah, that's a joke. All right, we're going to start with, I believe it's pronounced Chia or Chi. Uh, I don't want to get that wrong, but um, Kaylee Hoddle is, is the deaf girl that can communicate with Kong. I loved, this is probably my favorite, of the human aspect, it's probably the, my favorite, easily, of, of the story elements here. Because I just thought she was, yes, adorable, but also I thought she had real depth and heart to her. Yeah, I can't agree with you more about that. She was pretty incredible. And every time she was on the screen and interacting with Kong, I, I just loved every minute of, uh, of that. Because it's just like, as far as, you know, big little girl, big, scary monster loves her. Like, that's just such a great dynamic to play with. And, and, and they do it so well with this. Yeah, she was easily my favorite part of the human story or any story that I needed. And it Without her character, there would not be as much sympathy for Kong as we had. And it it really drove the feelings for people who were undecided, I would say, between which Mm -hmm. character they're going to root for. It really drove them towards Kong and made Godzilla seem to be the bad guy because Kong just wants to be home. He just wants to protect this little girl. He is just E.T. He's yes. And he's learned how to do sign language because he realizes that she's deaf and she can hear his heartbeat and everything was just so emotional and it elevated the intensity when Godzilla would attack Kong. Yeah. And she was um, the only one that survived from the natives the way that they explained it. But she was just absolutely adorable and fantastic actress. I hope she has a long and story career in Hollywood. And I also want to know Nobody noticed this when she's teaching the giant ape sign language. Like nobody, there's no camera. I mean, there, there's basically an entire <laughs> dome around this place. You would think there's some cameras hanging around. Nobody captured this. I'm feeling like, hey, what's she doing? He seems to be responding. <laughs> Did he say home? That's odd. No, I was more concerned like n- nobody is worried about this tiny little girl running out to like play with the giant ape that could. I mean, literally, the tip of his fingernail is bigger than her entire body. Yeah, hit the so. the child parental laws there in Skull Island are very thin, <laughs> very thin. Well, she's not she's not actually anyone's kid anymore. That's you know, true. She's just bait at this point. That's never stopped oh. us from assigning them to a parent. 
<laughs> That's true. Yeah. Sad. Sad but true. Sad but true. But she was the best the best element. And I did love that we were able to communicate. And I do want to ask about the humanized Kong, but I'll wait until we get to Kong because we're going to go by character. So anything else on her? No, she was okay. great. Alexander Skarsgård, Rebecca Halls, Nathan Lind, and Eileen Andrews. Eileen's been keeping Kong at an, at an offsite facility. It's Skull Island, but just basically with a dome over it. Never noticed uh, the sign language thing we just talked about. Nathan lost a brother or something searching for Hollow Earth. Why Why did they need to Kong to get there? That That's one element of the story I don't get. Um, what, what did you think of these two particular characters and their con- their journeys, I guess? <laughs> Is it a journey? I don't know. They went to Hollow Earth. This whole Hollow Earth plot was a big big issue. I didn't think it was as much of an issue for me as it seems like it was for you just because it's I only just... need to buy into it a little bit True. because the the whole movie anytime you have like a kaiju wars movie it's going to be ridiculous and they're going to have to take some some extensions to be able to make sense of some of this stuff and to try to advance things forward so I get they wanted to get to Hollow Earth and there was a purpose behind it. I don't know why they couldn't have just tried to find an easier route than just have him guide us. I thought I think they thought it would just be easy to to go through there, but weren't really thinking about the potential for Godzilla to find them on the way. I don't <laughs> especially when you're going through the water to move him. Like, why didn't they take helicopters to begin with if they're worried about the water? Well, apparently his presence in the water is, he can sense that. Godzilla has a crazy ability to sense things. It's like dolphin on steroids. (laughs) Right. It's like, he's in the water, he's a couple continents away, and he's like, wait, what's that? That that smells like my ancient rival. What? What is he doing (laughs) in the water right now? (laughs) But I think the helicopters wouldn't have been able to sustain that long of a trip right. because this Skull Island, if I'm not mistaken, based on what I saw in the title sequences, is over by Hawaii, and they needed to really get them pretty far um, to get them to the destination. So yeah, like I don't think that it would have held that far. But at the same time, I also learned that the helicopters that they use with like the two little spindly things on the top, I don't know They're what They're called the words ospreys. Are. Yes, those things are notorious for crashing. And so it seems a little crazy that they would all just unite and get something to the destination without dying. So, well, that's, it, I mean, it worked, right? It did. It did. It, work. did. it worked for me. I didn't care. I was fine. Yeah. Well, you know, Alexander Skarsgård, Skarsgård's character, I, I like what they did. They didn't make him seem like he was a badass. They didn't make him th- seem like he was very cool or knew what he was doing. He was a coward and a nerd. And <laughs> That it, was I, a great... I, I did like the coward and the callback to coward. I thought that was great. Yeah, that was pretty great. And Rebecca Hall, she, she was just... And it's not that she was not enjoyable to watch on screen. It's just that she was just completely overshadowed by giant monsters. And you kind of forget that she's there sometimes. But she, but her relationship with Chia or Chi or Chai or whatever you say, like that relationship was actually very sweet to see whenever she's interacting with her. I, I, I love those moments, too. It's kind of like uh, not as sweet and cool as when she is interacting with King Kong. But there's like a, a love there and you can actually feel that love between the two of them. And I, and I like that. Yeah, they very. The, yeah, go ahead. No, I go just ahead. they very much feel like mother and daughter, without being mother and daughter. Like you can tell, it's a very parental love, and she looks to her as a parental figure. Yeah, my problems with some of these story elements, like I don't know why we had to talk about Nathan's brother dying through the hollow, trying to get the hollow to Earth. That doesn't make any sense, other than to Explain. give you the idea that it's hard to get there. Um, and then as far as Kong going there or not, it just seems like they may have made it may have poorly uh, identified the reason Kong was there was to take him to this certain like power thing or radiation thing that is is the big power th- plant that they're looking for to power things, I guess. I don't know. But <laughs> the energy source yeah. to power Mecha Godzilla. Yeah. The thing yeah. you ruined for me. I paid very close attention to that. Yeah. <laughs> I see like the only reason why Kong needed to be there otherwise they would have been searching everywhere for this power source but this whole idea that Kong has a rivalry with Godzilla kind of led him to that throne room which is very I, I really like that aspect I think that's cool ancient rivals and whatnot the the 
Uh, don't worry. It's it's muscle memory from just being an ape. What? I don't know huh? if that's a thing, but maybe I, it is. Maybe in science there's some some. I mean, there's genetic disposition, of course, in people for that to to a certain extent. I don't know about locations. <laughs> Usually it's personality traits, but you know what? They're very instinctive, and maybe that, that works. It's one of those things where like we might be p- picking the plot. I didn't care. Like I don't. I never care about the plots in these movies. I am not one of those critics that just picks the plot. I just think it's funny, some of it. And the brother aspect, they had to show that because they had to demonstrate that it's very dangerous to go in there without the proper equipment so that you could explain why they have these new jazzy neon Tron mobiles uh, or whatever the hell these things are. The th- I think they're the carriers from V, right? Like, isn't that what it looked like to you? Just with yeah, flashing yeah. lights? <laughs> Yeah, they could look like the carriers from V only with four turbines on them as opposed to just <laughs> like, just like it flies for no good reason. Exactly. And you, and you had to have them down there with Kong because they have to mention important, important information like that axe is recharging right now. You know, that's, that's something we needed to know that the axe is right. on a recharge and they. Well, apparently... and I think the only way you could get this all to work is with Apex. Yeah, and wireless recharging. I think that's an important story <laughs> element that people aren't talking about. It's very important. Well, you you, you realize what the axe is, right? Uh, I, I think it's a big metal thing that goes in people's legs. Or Godzilla's legs. No. No. Okay. What is it? The axe is actually... It's it's actually one of the plates off of an uh, another creature like Godzilla that had died there. Oh. Okay. I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, so it's... It's one of those plates. That's why when he placed it, he placed the axe into that groove that's in the giant Godzilla skeleton, and it ended up charging up from that moment. So what they're saying in that moment is that they were, they were the power source was essentially the skeletal remains of a different creature like Godzilla, that once united, powered up, right, and pissed Godzilla off, and he's like, uh, I'm going to open up a hole, so it's a lot easier for you guys to get in and out of here from now on, right. Yeah. Good call. I like it. All right. (laughs) Now we go to the probably most needless additions to the plot. Like, I don't even know why we needed them there other than Uh, to show some things. But Millie Bobby Brown, Julian Dennison, and Brian Tyree Henry as Madison Russell, her dad, Kyle Chandler, also returned for for three minutes. You heard his name in Amanda's monologue. Thankfully. Uh, Josh Mm -hmm. Valentine, conspiracy podcast host, Bernie Hayes. That's who they play. And, um... I, I want to point out just one thing. Okay, Bernie Hayes, he's he's a source of humor, so there's there's definitely some of that. So they learned that lesson from that other superhero team up. <laughs> uh, he gets into like every secure area, every single one. Just he's undercover. I get it, but this is a guy that scares me in three seconds from knowing. I'm like, I would not let him into any secure area, but he's just like <laughs> all over the place. But what do you think about the humans here? Like these are the other characters were following as the heroes so to speak and Millie Bobby Brown was in King King of Monsters and I get why she's back to a degree I just don't know if their story was great <laughs> was it a great story no was it needed not really but it did I mean it connected I just I was more surprised that Millie Bobby Brown had more to do than her dad like more screen time than her dad, who is a more pivotal character to all of this. But we didn't need him. I mean, you know, I get we didn't what, need I get what either saying, of them. But... <laughs> we don't need either of them. I'm just saying between the two, it would make more sense to have his character have more screen time because he's actually a part of that. She's just like a little conspiracy kid who's like, yeah, let's just go stalk this podcast host <laughs> and make him do our deeds. Let's go hunt him I, down because like, we know he drinks bleach or uses bleach all the time. Showers so we with know. bleach. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. So because... we, that's how we find him. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, it's just, it's it's next level. Now, I will say that they're, they had some, I mean, they fit the story in here. They made it work. But I think also at the same time, if you took them out, probably would have been just as fine. Well, the only thing is the people saved Hong Kong, technically, because, of yeah. course, we've got two of the biggest titans in the world and they're going against, you know, a human made robot. And of course, we got to have people come in and spill some, you know, what was Alcohol. it, whiskey, booze to give uh, to give the advantage <laughs> back to Kong. And that's honestly all these things are I'm kind of nitpicking but i'm not really nitpicking because i don't really care that one i care about because that one irritated me i'm like no i want them to win 
and win fair. I don't, I don't want this where people <laughs> got to come in and thank God the people were there. No, the people suck. This is the people are the reason these two are battling it out and destroying right. con- tons of infrastructure. So that that's the only part that really annoyed me. Yeah, I'm with you on that being very annoying. The it would have been so much more interesting to see the two, both Kong and Godzilla, t- actually do a team up fight where the two of them, you know, one's holding one arm and one's doing this or that. that and <laughs> they the tag other, each and, other in and out. <laughs> they tag each other in and they they they're constantly like just keeping this thing on its toes because obviously it's it's stronger than Godzilla and and it's stronger than Kong but it's not it can't be stronger than both of them that that would have been a, a whole lot more interesting of an ending to see them just actually work together and then that moment at the end where they kind of stop and hey I'll follow you on Snapchat yeah bro I'm out <laughs> you know that whole moment would have been would have been a lot cooler <laughs> But yeah, yeah. I, I agree about these three characters. Well, actually, I liked Bernie. Bernie I liked makes Ber- I liked, makes I liked sense. all three. He of them. was I wasn't, yeah, yeah. He was enjoyable because he was funny. Bitch, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like he was needed. Bernie would Ber- like you guys talk about how it was like he's one of these people that you, you wouldn't let in those high secure areas. But to me, he is that guy who can get himself everywhere he wants to go on accident, and. I, I, and we all know this I, just I, because he's funny i get it I don't, yeah like I don't, just I, I can be funny at times i don't think i've ever gotten in a secure facility i think i'd be in jail i can't tell you this but i know somebody who's like this who accidentally gets themselves in places <laughs> that they don't belong i think i know this person lot. too no i'm fascinated i know a guy yeah. that does that too but not quite to secure level at government infrastructure buildings Oh, but yeah, he's yeah, already there because he's still an engineer. Yeah, I know he's an engineer. He's, yeah, he's, he's already there. Yeah, yeah. he's still and a smart the, guy, and and he has a place in this organization. They just they never think twice about him because he's a little weird and quirky and whatever. Right. Yeah. But, however, I'm I I feel like they've all they know of this podcast. <laughs> And and yeah, his that's voice really isn't it's very masked familiar. at all. So how do they not recognize like, oh, that's a guy in engineering who told me not to eat apples because of the GMOs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at one point, I'm, I thought the same thing, Amanda. I'm like, um, wouldn't somebody be like, you sound just like Bernie. That's weird, right? And then he just starts going... Uh, uh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. I just don't know. <laughs> not me. Yeah, like like this company Apex wouldn't have a team of lawyers paying attention to this podcast at all. That's I, right. I get that that that's a bit of a stretch to get past. But well, the hang, rest of hang him, on. as podcast hosts, I am appreciative that they finally made a podcast host save the world essentially because you know his bourbon or whatever is what really took the took yeah. the advantage. So there's a plus there for us. Like, and you have bourbon all the time. So um, right now, what do you think has been in this red? So cup you're basically a superhero <laughs> now. Yeah. It's about time. That's it. If only I could bang on my chest without getting hurt, without being <laughs> injured. Uh, I do want to point out, I love the Tron Express train to Hong Kong, where they just <laughs> pop in. I'm like, who built that this? That is so Godzilla. Like, that's like a, such a Godzilla thing. A lot of this is actually old school Godzilla it throwbacks is. Yeah, it so is. that we're seeing here. Like the needless use of a van that has antennas all over it. Why? Why is it there? Good question. And where do people always find these vans? Where does this kid have this van and that has antennas he stole and radios from his brother. and satellites yeah, he stole it from on his it? Brother, it was clearly yeah, why? explained. And then he yeah. he drives around uh, playing the breaking the law song. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like how ironic! I oh, that reminds me. This soundtrack for this movie was awesome. Yeah, it was I a great loved soundtrack. it. Oh, God, I yeah. loved yeah. it. The moments were perfect to use the right songs. I just. It really took it to the next level. I'm glad you brought that up because too often in blockbuster fair, I, I feel like whenever you get songs that are incorporated, it always concerns me because not because of the movie at the time, but 10 years from now when I watch it, mm. it can be a distraction. You know, it's like, oh, that's so 90s. or That's so 2000s. Yeah. And I feel like this one will play. This one will play. And I always keep that in mind when I'm hearing them. I'm like, is this going to play in 10 years? And yeah, I think this one will play. Yeah, this is, that's a that's a trait that we have to thank James Gunn and um, Edgar Wright Edgar Wright Edgar Wright for because uh, the, both of them are and Tarantino. Okay. Yeah, okay. Like, that's a whole like those three directors are very good at choosing mu- music for their movies. 
All right. Well, we got Damian Bashir and Isa Gonzalez as Walter and Maya Simmons. They've got heaves. They explain special gravitational operational capabilities. I, I do kind of want to get like, how did how did Apex and Lind discover Hollow Earth from up top? Does I, I know that they talked about using their new satellite satellite that, that shows the Hollow Earth inside of Earth. But how did they come up with it? Because they were already digging to it. Lind knows about it because he was part of Monarch, and Monarch has been testing that whole Hollow Earth theory since the first movie, or since uh, King Kong uh, Kong Island. Okay, that explains it. Uh, that's the one thing where I was like, uh, it didn't bother me. I was just kind of curious. I do want to say Demian Bashir as Walter Simmons. I, I don't think Isa really got much time here. Uh, she got she was very- annoying when she did get time. She was supposed to be. I mean, yeah, yeah, like I wanted not her supposed to, to like either of them. And she kept calling it a monkey. And until I, like, I was like, okay, maybe he is a monkey. Then I realized and found out, no, no, Kong is not a monkey. This really bothers you, being labeled a monkey. Well, they just, they used it so much. I'm like, first of all, it's the cliche, an obnoxious, annoying woman who's kind of stupid. But at the same time, I did want her to get smacked around by Kong. Is this a woke thing? Am I going to get canceled because I said monkey like three times? No. I don't think it's anything where they where where it's like an obnoxious woman kind of thing. It's just supposed to measure the her, her level of caring about about Kong and arrogance. And so yeah, her, and her arrogance. So her like it really emphasizes those things the most versus making her this obnoxious woman. It's just more about she just doesn't care and she's thinks she's queen shit so she's just going to call it whatever she feels like calling it we can all agree it was great when he he squished her though right yeah yeah that was funny yeah he just looks and he uh, the thing i loved about that this was a fun touch and i it's probably adam wingard because he's he's great with little stuff like this but the touch was kong pulls the the heave up to his face looks in the window make sure he knows who's in there and says no Uh, but Demian Bashir, I thought, like, he's an actor I really love. I, I really love his work. He, he's been in a lot of things. But I don't think I've ever seen him this animated and just have, just chewing scenery. And I, I really, really dug it. I really, <laughs> really want him to be more of these kinds of characters. He just seemed fun, you know? Yeah, he definitely did. He seemed like he was just eating on eating the scenery left and right, and he was com- completely thrown into this role. That, that just, like... He disappears in it, and you can't measure any of his other roles to it. And he's just that perfect. I want. I'm a megalomaniac billionaire who's going to take over the world. That's great. Save the world, not take it over. Save the world. No, I mean, you say tomato, I say tomato. Some some guy has a three, a four hundred foot tall robot Godzilla. They're not there to save anything. They're there to be like, hey, guess who's boss now? I mean, you have a case. You have a case, counselor. Yeah, I thought he was fantastic. I did not expect him to have as much range in his acting just based on things I've seen him before in, in terms of playing a completely opposite character. Like, I just didn't expect it. So that was nice to see him do. And I hope we get to see a little bit more of him because that's twice this year we've seen him. So that's that's nice. Yeah, he's he's a great actor. Um that kind of segues into Apex's creation of Mega God- Mecha Godzilla and how Walter has his right hand man piloting the poor thing when it gets short circuited. It's very sad. But the what happens is they get the energy and apparently they just replicate it. John, please explain. Yeah, they take it. They take the sample down in the hollowed earth and they send the chemical makeup, I guess, to to Apex, and that's how they synthesize this this fuel for Mecha Godzilla in minutes. Yeah, minutes, maybe seconds. Be- because well, they were ready. Well, they've created an entire <laughs> so express train to Hong Kong. I think they can manage to do this within minutes. I still want to know who who built that tunnel. That who built that? Because well, was it underwater? Never mind just the tunnel. But they're in Florida. They're in Pensacola, Florida, and they they built an underground facility. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, they did. They sure did. Do you know what happens when you dig too deep in Florida? I don't. I don't live in Florida. You hit water. Yeah, that's okay. what I'm saying. It was underwater. I literally just did that. It's an underwater tunnel that goes all the way to Hong Kong. Who built that? 
Who built it? Godzilla. No. Well, he could have, I guess. They just, hey, can you get bring no. your fire over here? <sighs> Thanks, bud. Thanks. Yeah. Your check's in the mail, pal. Oh, look, it's flooded again. Just put Kong wet. on the other end, and he'll just go <laughs> with his mouth, and there you right. go. Aw. You, the teamwork. All right, so what did you think about Apex's creation of Mechagodzilla? It uses the energy source, and once it has that, apparently that also infuses it with the recklessness, the, the, the desire to break free, the desire to rampage, whatever. It makes it its own little titan and definitely takes out the creator first off. What did you think of Mechagodzilla that John ruined for me? <laughs> well, seeing as I ruined it, I'm going to go ahead and just step in here. First of all, my ruining it was just nothing more than like I saw elements from the old Godzilla movies in that first trailer, mm-hmm. and the, all the elements reminded me of Mecha Godzilla. That's why I said there's no way Mecha Godzilla is not in this movie, so, and I expected mm-hmm. to be wrong because I'm wrong so often. But I love that you admit I, that so casually. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm wrong yeah. all the time. It's fine. I've accepted it. Yeah, very frequently, <laughs> I, I am incorrect. Yeah, <laughs> I'm rarely ever right. It's okay. I, I live with it. I sit in it. I wear my dunce cap very happily. It's just a great place to be, and I don't care. The creature of Mechagodzilla I thought was awesome. I, I like the idea of how they explain it be, kind of getting its own consciousness from the uh, from kind of like the the leftover remains of Ghidorah, Ghidorah. Yeah. which... And and as well as the what was inputted by this human being who had his brain plugged into the the whole thing because who who sacrifices their brain like this I don't know, but this guy did. Yeah, he didn't realize People that's what he was would. doing, but that's what he did. Uh, so yeah, and as far as the fight goes with Mechagodzilla, and it's it's actually so much cooler than any Mechagodzilla fight I've ever seen because he is you know he's more dynamic in his motion he's not very robotic he's very alive and it's just brutal what he does oh and the minute when the camera goes up the the scales or whatever and they start popping into place Mm -hmm. oh that was a great Mm -hmm. moment that was a great yeah that was a very cool moment i liked how big and like everything that godzilla is he was and then some You know, like, I expected it to, I anticipated, because, again, John anticipated it to be, (laughs) and the internet, to be fair, to not rag on John too much. The internet did totally ruin this for us. But No, John ruined it for me. I didn't see it anywhere else. (laughs) Nowhere else did I see that. I, I fully expected it to just basically be Godzilla, but robot. But it was Godzilla and then some as a robot. And the way that he was conceived was the same I feel like was similar to the way Godzilla was actually created it was it it's still that that analogy or metaphor for people messing with things that they shouldn't and bad things come of it like if we hadn't had the atomic bomb that created the radi- radiation or radioactive whatever in Godzilla he wouldn't have the powers that he does and this Mecha Godzilla wouldn't be as crazy and big and, you know, consciously thinking on his own independently and having his own autonomy if they weren't trying to control it. And it's it's humans trying to interfere with things that they really shouldn't. And it always goes wrong. We know it goes wrong. And yet, listen. yeah, never listen. And so as much as that is a typical cliche, it still worked for me because I feel like these other two monsters, they're they're ruled by more than just fight. They're ruled by more. It, it, at least that's what I took away from this movie. They're ruled by more than just their historical plight that they have between these two these two big rivals. Like they manage to work together because they're like, ah, shit, no, bad. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> stop doing this. And well, I mean and Godzilla's I ruled that. by no, you don't make two of me. All right. Yeah. There's <laughs> one I'm, I'm me. the king, baby. <laughs> I will burn this house down if yeah. you think you're gonna make a Literally. replacement for me. You know Literally. the my first name is God, right? <laughs> <laughs> You guys First picked it. God. You should know. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, that, 
that's that's crazy. Oh, I do. I I can't believe I didn't mention this. One thing I couldn't stop thinking throughout the entire movie. All right, this is going to sound weird, but you know how they're in Hollow Earth, both at the in the middle and at the end of the movie because of Apex mm-hmm. and whatnot. Mm-hmm. The absolute missed opportunity of not sending Millie Bobby Brown to the upside down, basically, is just a waste of waste of celluloid. Yeah, I'm not there with you. <sighs> I think about it. Yeah, I don't care. Mm-mm. That would have been fantastic. You guys don't understand how fun it is. All right. Well, Kong. Speaking of Kong, before we actually talk about the fights, because I know you're going to talk about the fights, right? I'm just going to talk about Kong. Oh, okay. I was going to talk about, the, you know, the character of Kong, but is there more? Well, I was going to talk about something related to the movie, not necessarily the character. Well, you're already you're already in it, Amanda. Let's go. Okay. I'm here. <laughs> my my favorite well, Amanda thing would have I... a five-minute conversation <laughs> about something she's going to have a conversation about. <laughs> My favorite thing that I think has, in my perspective, perspective has not been done this well, at least in any other movie that I can recall. The way that they made these characters through the special effects made them look so the ratio of how large and oh, real yeah. and the impact mm-hmm. that they had. The scale. It Yeah, it just it felt so authentic and it created a level of terror in me. And I'm like, wow, they are really big. (laughs) Like, I guess I never thought about how big a giant ape would be or how big this Godzilla in the water creature would be. Because when I see them, they're typically like scaled down a little bit more, still big, but not as it just wasn't emphasized as much in previous movies that I've seen. And so here I'm like, wow, these are really, really massive creatures. And and more than just are they as tall as a building or taller than a building? It was what is the impact of them falling down or swinging their arm the wrong way or splashing in water? And take, I thought it was take out so a condominium. perfect. That's what it is. Boosh, yeah, gone. at least 12 of them. <laughs> like it just it was the best part of it for me because it and especially seeing it in a theater with a massive screen and Dolby yeah. surround sound. Mm-hmm. I was completely there. I felt like, OK, this monster is going to eat my face soon if I don't move out of the way because they felt so big and real. That's one thing that these movies in general have been really good at is is setting up setting up the size of these movies. I re- I still remember the in the first movie the the Halo drop scene in which they use that in the trailer. You see you see him kind of freaking out as well not freaking out but he's breathing in the air as he's dropping down into the clouds, mm-hmm. and then you realize that he's going through the clouds. And he's still in the clouds, and then you he's like falling past Godzilla's hand, and just how small he is in comparison to the size of Godzilla's hand is is such an awesome scene. And I loved I loved how they played with that size aspect of him. And again, as far as the physical impact of a creature like Godzilla coming out of the ocean uh, in Hawaii, where it actually creates a tidal wave to some degree, yeah. uh, is is awesome. The only thing that I would say in terms of the design between the monsters is. It was really unfair because Kong, you look at his face and he's like adorable and he's got like puppy dog eyes. He was so eyes cute. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Little, little, mm-hmm. little monkey, ape, whatever. <laughs> you look so cute. And then you look at Godzilla and he's angry and ugly and scornful. I mean, he just looks like the ex you've been trying to get rid of for years. <laughs> it's just like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Poor guy. No wonder he's got that bad breath. He's just angry. That's true. Him. Now, that's and that's one of the reasons why I think like this was this was King Kong's movie more than it was Godzilla because Godzilla wasn't in it nearly as much as Kong was. Well, he destroyed everything. God, he fell at one point. He stumbled and fell down, and he knocked out I think three skyscrapers. That's a big but dude. But to be to be yeah. fair, Godzilla, the moments he did have were huge. Like Kong had all of the <laughs> yeah, they were. <laughs> Kong had all of the humanity and and the sweetness that he had that compassion that we got for him but Godzilla had the ass beating like he really just and I did not expect it to like we all had this conversation in our last episode about who's gonna win the fight essentially mm-hmm. and and we kind of for the most part there was an agreement a consensus that Godzilla is a big bad monster that could do damage to Kong and I just didn't expect how much damage he could do to Kong, especially in this movie where I see how big and strong he is. And I'm I'm given that. And then as 
as I have compassion for him, then he comes against Godzilla, which just demolishes him. Like he he had to be saved multiple times against Godzilla or else he wouldn't have survived. Yeah, he's huge. He's monstrous. And he's also got little hands. So I don't really know um, how, how, <laughs> they, how do they build all this stuff in Hollow Earth, you know, back in the day. Because, I mean, like, that would have taken forever, those little hands. They just use their breath and they're like, carve that out. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go that. Kong. This is a question I really want to like ask the kaiju lover, right? And that's that's you, Johnny. You've been you've loved these since you were a kid. You love these. Movies. I mean, I like them for the the pound town. Wow, that's the wrong. That's the wrong. <laughs> that is not <laughs> what is happening not here. The correct You're watching a use. different kaiju movie. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know where you found this copy, but it's definitely covered by curtains in a movie store. <laughs> right. In terms of Kong, do you think they they humanized him too much? No, I don't think they did at all because there's supposed to be so, a, a level of magic when it comes to these creatures and giving them the ability of bonding with humans is something that I think is a good good element. And it's actually a strong element in the Toho movies for Godzilla also. Uh, it's just something that is a great way to help connect to that it's a yeah connect, connect to that kaiju for sure. So do you think they didn't they did not humanize Godzilla enough then? In that respect, it would have been so much better. Uh, not, uh, maybe if they, well, no, actually, in that respect, they can only do one or the other. They couldn't do both. And I understand why they chose Kong because Godzilla already got his big moment. So now it's time for Kong to get his big moment. And uh, maybe in the next movie, we'll see some humanizing of Godzilla. Okay. Now let's talk about the the fights. I mean, you brought up the fights. So round one, uh, Kong loses. But what'd you think about the. <laughs> Ping, ping ponging off of ships, by the way. I love that he's using them as, as stepping rocks, essentially, as he's <laughs> jumping towards Godzilla. What'd you think of that fight? I thought that was a fantastic fight, mm. monster fight at sea. It was fun. That I like that is what the only word that comes to mind is just how fun this movie was for these monsters to fight. And again, I'm not somebody who's normally invested or cares about these big fights. I don't even care about people fighting. So me investing in fake monsters fighting is usually a little bit further out there. And I get that's not the norm, but I just, it takes more. But these were so good. They were, they emphasized how big and bad they were. And the moment when Godzilla drags him under the water. Oh, that was hard. It would, and you could see him start to, to, drown. to suffocate and drown. Yeah, I I was like, wow, that really shows the power of Godzilla because we've seen the power of Godzilla in different ways, but I don't think we've really fully understand, or at least for me, I'll speak for myself, I haven't really fully grasped how how impactful him being able to go land and water is for him and how big and bad he is. And I was like, man, he's really going to just, he could destroy everything. Like, he's just a big, bad monster. That's what I've been saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I felt yeah, it, John. I felt it. <laughs> I really dug it. But unfortunately, I don't think there was any chance Kong could have won that battle because it's in the water. I mean, and there's, he would, he can't swim really. So what's he going to do? He's just going to eventually, he's going to drown. He literally had to be saved. Yeah, he he didn't have to be safe. Thankfully, the humans were there again. Yeah, this is one of those things where poor Kong gets hamstrung by the fact that he has no firm ground to stand on. So yeah, I it, it's there's no way he could have won that fight. Uh, but I but I love that fight so much. Kong sitting there looking at all the boats, going, "Okay, I can jump on this one and then make it over to this big one, and then we can fight on that big one." That was awesome when you kind of see him do that whole thing. And then the diehard jump off the carrier. <laughs> I love that, that moment where he's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> that was so great. It was so fun. Yeah. The great part about that was him, you know, he's Kong and yeah, he's, a, he's just sometimes a big dumb ape sometimes you think. But he looks down and he sees that light illuminating and he's like, um... This is nope. bad, right? This is this is bad. <laughs> and he just has that moment of awareness where he's I think I'm out. I think I'm out. Bye guys. <laughs> and they they made Godzilla kind of 
they used a little bit of Jaws, I felt like, because the way they that did. they had the, him swiveling in the water. That and was see, 100% an homage to Jaws. So yeah. awesome. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, could you imagine being the uh, like thinking about the humans in this experience? Could you imagine them being like, oh, my God, it's not a shark. It's a giant Godzilla here to fight our giant ape like <laughs> no i can't imagine it's terrifying human, and i really can't amu- imagine why you would lock yourself into a tiny room when you know there's a good chance the ship is gonna sink that just yeah. <laughs> felt like a bad call but i did like well the, the little girl dragged her in there so uh, you can say no it's an important thing to be a parent to say no i don't want to do dumb <laughs> things stay here child i don't want to do dumb things <laughs> <laughs> i did like how lynn used that moment to unlock calling and realize i think i need him we really really need him to yeah to win this, yeah. to even have a chance at this. All right. The second battle is in Hong Kong. I mean, they say it's a second, like he, this round two goes to Kong. And I'm like, well, that was pretty short because that round wasn't over. But I guess they went back to their corners for a little bit so they could have a clear winner. So what do you think of round two where Kong gets the advantage? He's got the magic axe. Uh, it's all powered up by Godzilla and whatnot. And he he does get some some good licks and knocks Godzilla on his ass. Now, John, as a Godzilla fan, were you a little worried there? Were you a little like, no, that's this couldn't happen. That's my big lizard. <laughs> no, I would never take one of those things and be like, that would never happen because giant monsters fighting. If I if I start if I start laying down rules as to what would or wouldn't happen then, then uh, I, I I would actually start with. Giant monsters don't exist. So there are no rules <laughs> okay, and it's okay. Fair. So that, that being said, it's a, it's a trait in every single Godzilla movie. This is the same. It's, a, it's the same thing in wrestling too. You know, Hulk Hogan gets smashed and he's, you know, he's down on his knees and then someone's got mm-hmm. an arm lock and, and all of a sudden the crowd starts ch- chanting for, you know, Hulk Hogan. It's a Hulk, 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 Hulk. And uh, he starts feeling the power and then he gets back up and then he starts whooping ass again. It's the exact same thing here. I, I don't really count it as what, you know, as Kong won round two or not, I just think that he he was able to get a couple of great great licks in, and then Godzilla really put a hurting on him, which is obvious because the humans had to come in again and hit him with a defibrillator they made out of a spaceship. Yeah, it was. I thought that was pretty actually funny that you bring up wrestling because when he was when he jumps up and he's got the axe and it's the moments in every trailer and everything, and he's coming at him that way. I'm like, that's totally like from the top of the ring. Yep, <laughs> jumping down. Once again to Pound Town, and just taking that lizard <laughs> out, monkey. And I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> that, that, oh God, that axe scene was awesome. So that, again, I, I figured out halfway through the movie when they showed when when I was looking at the axe finally in the movie, I go, "That's a freaking dorsal blade off of a off of a Godzilla creature," and then they show that it's actually what it is, and I thought that was very cool and how he was able they were able to use it as a way to fight. Um, to give himself an advantage or at least combat the advantage that that Godzilla has mm-hmm. with the radioactive breath was was kind of a smart way to even the playing field because in the in the original Kong versus Godzilla they gave Kong the ability of um of absorbing electricity and then being I remember able that. to yeah yeah that was weird which that's it's a weird it's a weird thing to give a monkey and it's a weird thing in general to to have i th- there's no explanation to it so to give them the ability of uh, and we know that monkeys can, or apes can create tools so th- to give him the ability of of creating a tool like this or his people the ability of creating a tool like this to fight other people makes sense to me Amanda, you're a big Kong fan. Did you love the fight when you thought maybe he was going to win this one? And then you realize oh, a few seconds later he's not. I w- Yeah, I was excited for him. But I never felt like he won. <laughs> like There was no moment where I was ever like, yeah, Kong won this. Yeah, it neither. was just Kong got a few seconds of beat down on Godzilla. And then Godzilla came back and was like, all right, homie, now you're ready to really play. Let's do this. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, smacked him around a bunch killed him so it's it never felt like kong actually won but i think that's kind of what they wanted to do they wanted you to your guy that's why they built the sympathy yeah they wanted you to sympathize with him and connect with him so that way your heart is kind of like no no like i cried a bunch of times with kong in here and i was mad at godzilla because he wouldn't stop and let up but again that's kind of the point and the point is to show who's the stronger monster here and even though Kong got some really, really good hits in, 
I think we know who is the stronger monster here, the stronger kaiju. Yeah, and speaking of yeah. who the strongest one is, uh, you can support us on Patreon at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash the Hollywood Outsider. That's called an awkward plug. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, I, I want to mention the third fight. I mean, I don't really think it's a third fight. I know, I know, Skarsgård wants to throw it out there that that was round two, but feels like it was round two and I, and then round two kind of finished because Godzilla did kill him and. We, I think Kong conceded too, so Kong did bow to someone. Now, did you guys collectively, do you feel like that was the right answer to to the who's going to win? And it actually did do the thing, you know, they were saying one will fall, and I think everybody thought neither one's going to fall. But one did fall. I mean, God, King Kong really did die. If it wasn't for more people, he uh, he would be dead. That's a good point, actually, because I was thinking up till this moment... I didn't really feel like anybody fell and that this was just, you know, they just use that as one of their log like lines a split or something. Decision. Yeah, but it was, he really did fall because he did die. Like she could hear his, well, he was dying and, and then he was revived. He wasn't fully dead, but he did lose and he did he died. concede. Yeah, he conceded and he died. I mean, he... He was, I mean, he had to get a He was dying. His heart was going, was slowing down. So he wasn't dead dead. She could still hear his heart, which I thought was another really cool moment. I love the way they incorporated oh, that was sweet. the yeah. elements of being deaf and, and still being able to communicate and, and how communication takes on so many different forms I thought was really beautiful in this And film. way too deep for this movie, but I loved it. I appreciated <laughs> it. But I'm yeah. the whole time I'm like, this is so much better than the, the movie really deserves. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> someone's actually paying attention here this is kind of bullshit <laughs> <laughs> uh but that leads to you know kong's dead and then lynn comes across comes back with a heave and has a, has a great idea about i'm gonna jump start my heart and gets him going and uh get, gets clear okay brings him back from the dead and and that's but during that we get the fight between mecha godzilla and godzilla now this is where you get you get Godzilla fighting the murder bot that he's been sensing sensing for the whole movie. I'm still a little fuzzy on how that works, but I'm just going to let it go because who cares, right? He just he just knew somebody was making something that smelled a little like him in the water, well, I guess. I, I don't know. There's, John, there's some explanation to it. Oh, please. Okay, let please. me try. Let me try and tell me if I'm wrong or right, because my thought was he it. could sense the... So Ghidorah, that brain tel- tele- telepathy thing that was happening... I think was what signaled to Godzilla that there was something going on because he knew that that wasn't that Ghidorah wasn't alive anymore, but he knew that there was something Mm. happening because he could recognize that and sense it and they were using it for their benefit. And I felt like that's what that connection was for him. Well, it's a little bit of that, but in King of the Monsters, there's a lot of talk about how there's uh, actually in Godzilla, there's a lot of talk about how uh, the Titans identify each other and there's a uh, and that's one of the reasons why they create the Orca, you know, that device and that that that, that essentially calls the monsters left and right and center and wakes them up. So that when that scene in which Bernie is in the back of the tunnels and the, 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 the floor rips open and there's a piece of equipment, that big red ball that's kind of like yeah. pulsing in a way yeah. that was acting like the orca was acting in in King of All Monsters. It was giving off this like it was giving off a signal of an apex predator. And that's what was triggering Godzilla. Ah. Wow. I'm glad you're here because that makes you're more so sense. Smart, John. Yeah. Thanks. I, I try. I wish you would have told me at the beginning of the show before I mentioned it three or four more times because <laughs> that makes me look less stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like help, <laughs> help a brother out is what I'm telling. Well, see, I, I, but you you have everything set up in an order. And I didn't want to get to it until we got to that order. And every time you brought it up, I was like, I'm just gonna hold it until we get mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Also, there's probably m- the majority. Well, I don't want to say the majority. There's probably a lot of listeners who are on the same page as Aaron and I, where they're like, I'm not really sure if I know this. I can take a jab and maybe I do know some of this. And then we have John to be like, you're wrong. I still think it's thin. You're somewhat wrong. You're I mean, right. If if it's a if it's an actual Titan, I would get I would understand it a little bit more, but this is, you know, 
Johnny Robotics, but whatever. So you got this fight between Godzilla and Mechagodzilla. And we've already talked about Mechagodzilla and how happy you were to see him. But how did you feel about the fight? Because Godzilla, your boy, your boy, who you put money on before the fight, I do remember, uh, got his ass kicked. Yep. What'd you think about? Was that was that BS? Was that bullshit? Or was that fair? No, no, that's about that's that's about right, man. Mecha Godzilla, uh, hands down, almost always beats Godzilla. The, in every single version of Mecha Godzilla, it takes two monsters to take down Mecha Godzilla. So, the idea that this Mecha Godzilla rolls out and he is completely just. I, you know, you want to call it bitch slap. You want to call oh, it bitch just yeah. raffle stomping him. Everything you could call it. Like it, he grabs his head and starts ramming it into buildings. Come on. That that's freaking cool. awesome. Man, yeah. he totally American history X'd him. He really did. He just yeah. like curb stomped his ass. It was it On was the top delightful. of buildings. <laughs> yeah. It was brutal. And it, and it needed to be a brutal fight. Missiles being launched off. Yeah, that's something that Mechagodzilla does do from time to time. I don't always think that the missiles would do anything, but you're already looking at a bat- battle scarred Godzilla that has open wounds from being hit by a- an axe made out of a blade, just like whatever's on his back. So it explains why he's a little bit weak at this point or being weakened and, and getting his ass handed to him. But again, I totally bought the whole Mecha Godzilla doing this and I'm okay with it. So how did we all think about the final fight? Because this is what happens. It's the final <laughs> Countdown. This is what happens. Well, that's funny because we're recording this on April third. So that's four, three, two, one. Ah, uh, it is the final <laughs> countdown. What? <laughs> anyway, so there. <laughs> I'm gonna just ponder that for a minute. That was interesting. All right. So, um, basically, what happens is Kong gets gets jolted. He comes back to life, grabs that axe, and he goes he goes after. Now, because of the bourbon, Kong, after getting his ass almost handed to him, he gets a little momentary weakness in mecha godzilla because mecha godzilla at that point gets i don't know you know gets frazzled up up top for a second loses some power right yeah, exactly which while he loses that sense those senses that's when kong takes advantage of it and uses the axe which godzilla charges you know he's like oh yeah you need some juice Whoosh! and bam then he uses the axe to to bring him down and and basically kill him now i want to ask is that a fair fight or was that the right Solution because then basically Godzilla gets a hand in it, Kong gets a hand in it, and the people get a hand in it and the win. I would have preferred to see no people involved. So that whole pour, pouring the liquor down the computer, though an effective way of doing it, just seems it seems to counterintuitive to their explanation as to why all of a sudden Mecha Godzilla is acting on his own. Completely destroys it, as I would say, because yeah. he's on his own because of this energy source and the. Ghidorah and everything else, but apparently, you know, window Windows 10 is going to affect it. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's what I I was a little I was a little thrown back by the idea that idea because it just it does completely destroy that whole explanation. But I I would have loved to seen more of Godzilla and Kong tag teaming in a way. You know, when one gets knocked out, the other one jumps in, yes. and you know, vice versa, where they're going back and forth and doing big combos and stuff like that. Uh, that would have been much more interesting to see versus what we they got. Joined, but it was still a fun fight. a clothesline. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they both one one person or one monster grabs one arm and the other grabs the other, and then they just like topple it on top of. Uh, a giant building with one of those sharp, pointy antenna things. Oh, uh, yeah. <sighs> impales them. Yeah, impales. Thank you. You know, um, or King Kong holds on to Mechagodzilla's arms to, to give Godzilla a running chance to jump and do the leg drop that he does in mm. <laughs> against Megalon. You know, some silly moves like that. They rip robot too. arms off. And start beating him with robot arms. <laughs> yes, I I agree. I would have liked Baseball. less human interaction. <laughs> oh man, the the fact that people were even there and they're all sitting around trying to figure out the password, and I'm like, what is happening? This is TV yeah. writing right here. This is TV writing. He's not. If this and I was so on the edge of my seat. If this kid figures out this password to this mega corporation because he's sitting there in some random, he's, he's a random picture or something. I'm gonna lose it. But thankfully, that didn't happen. I still, yeah, wish. I, I did did love that line. The whole like, how, wh- how do you know you can you can hack? Well, I learned HTML in this class. <laughs> HTML. Where are you from? The nineties? Yeah, that was great. <laughs> uh, 
That's so funny. All right. So what, what did you think of the win though? You guys, you guys cool with the win other than the people shouldn't have been involved, but that was like still a great fight. I think we can, agree. it was still a great fight. I still liked the win and I did love the moment where, but they go back and forth at each other and I uh, basically, you know, bang each other's chest back and forth. This, you know, Kong, you know, Kong's like, all right, you, you win this, this fight. And Godzilla's like, I win every fight. And Kong's like, yeah, you're right. You're right. And they got that <laughs> nod of respect. Like, I got it. You, you're kind of the king of the world. I got it. Right. I did think Godzilla was going to come at him again or Kong was going to because Kong started getting all angry again. Or I took it as angry, like aggression. Yeah, and I thought Godzilla won. was going to respond. Yeah, but he didn't, thankfully. And they just kind of went on their separate ways, which was great. But I I do think that this could have been a, I don't want to say longer fight scene, but I think it could have been more involved where we're focusing more on the characters. And I know we talked about humans being less involved, but just paying attention to them less. Aside from the moment where the little girl hears his heart. Yeah, that was great. Dying like that was a great moment. They could have left that. But maybe he finds a way to revive himself or Godzilla jumps on his chest or something. And that happens to I don't know, like it does something to get him back up. It (laughs) just I would have liked something that. Ow! It was the monsters. Yeah. <laughs> Godzilla steps on his pinky toe and then he's like, ah, oh, it's on. Oh! <laughs> yeah, you know, it whips him with whips him in the face with the tail. Like he's yeah. sitting there facing off with Mecha Godzilla and Godzilla just Get like up. turns around. <laughs> See, hey, I need you a second. Get up. Just whips him in the face with the tail. Yeah. I was I was yeah. fine with the heart defibrillator part. I thought that was kind of funny and clever yeah. a little bit. Yeah. It was the kids and the bourbon and that was just dumb. Well, I so mean, dumb. we've already agreed that yeah. that storyline was kind of ridiculous and dumb and not needed. But I did like general. Godzilla. I mean, it was a nod of respect between the two of them. Like they both, the alpha males were like, all right, you know, we're good. But I, I did, I think Godzilla had like a little look back when he's walking into the water where he's just and I don't know if it was a, you know, kind of like a respect thing or if it was, I'm just making sure you ain't doing nothing stupid, bitch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, I'm good. I'm out of here then. That was great. All right. And then we uh, we end with Godzilla going back into the water and with Kong in the hollow earth slash upside down. And he's just enjoying being home. So overall, what are your favorite moments? I mean, we talked about a bunch of them, but what are your, like, when you think back on this movie, like, what do you, what stands out? The diehard jump off the battleship <laughs> or the aircraft carrier. Ditto. It was that, totally diehard. Hang looked... on. I didn't even think of that. That's great. Yeah. He said this earlier. Where were we? I don't, where I don't were remember hearing he diehard. diehard. I don't yeah. remember hearing that. But now I, yeah, it's, ah, I like it. I don't always <laughs> listen. <laughs> this... <laughs> that was a great moment at the end you know, I wish Godzilla had some moments like that. Unfortunately, he didn't. But again, it's, it's... No, he did have one great moment where I will say this is probably like what stood out to me the most when Kong is down and he's clawing him. That that was a, a very visceral moment. Like I was actually very concerned. That was the only time I was ever concerned for any of the monsters. I was like, oh, my God, that's got to hurt. When, when yeah. Godzilla digs his claws into him. So I think, you know, he had he had some plus that fire breathing down and burning a hole through the planet i thought was in the intense. jaws thing that was really cool yeah, in the jaws moment yeah. yeah the jaws moment was pretty cool god there's just so many moments that's the the, the 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 whole fight with oh the the fight with <laughs> when they introduce us to mecha godzilla the first time when the the three of them f- go into that battle arena and they're like oh what is going on here and they're like this is where things get sacrificed and you're like well what's getting sacrificed in here <laughs> and then the skull crawler yeah. comes out yeah uh oh, that was pretty great I'm a big fan of all of the heartfelt moments. So the moments between Kong and Jaya and just really every scene that they had when she first sees him and she's got her little Kong doll. I thought that was so cute. No, that was really cute. And we already talked about the defibrillator moment, the moment where she teaches him sign language and everybody else is like, wait a second. He knows sign language. He can communicate with her. I Could have been useful. <laughs> yeah, a long time ago. Hey, can you lead us here? Because uh, so right. you know more than every scientist yeah. here. You're way further than we are. <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of cool moments. the The Hong Kong fight scene had some really cool ones where it was just big monsters fighting, and then it would zoom in on it would be a close up of their kaiju face, mm-hmm. like angry and like ah. 
and I thought that was really cool. Oh, well, I love the lighting. I, I just thought like, the lighting was beautiful. Oh, yeah. What beautiful lighting they had in this, and and just some of uh, the, the I don't know the neon <laughs> that was flying everywhere. I just thought, wow, this is a really well shot. Like Adam Wingard, congrats. You know we've kind of raved about him since the guest, and you're next. But I'm glad he got some access to some real money and mm-hmm. made a fun, fun, fun ass movie. Yeah. Yeah, that scene in Antarctica uh, where the little girl is telling him that home is is down the hole. Yeah, and he and he kind of doesn't want to go. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. that was sweet. That was sweet. Really, I hope they if they make another one, I hope she's back. I really I don't care about anybody else in the cast, but her, yeah. I, I would really like to see her back. Well, there's a lot of people thinking that they're going to actually make a third movie out of it after this. It'd be a fifth movie, wouldn't it? Well, a third Godzilla movie. Oh, we don't care about Kong anymore? Is that what we're saying? No, we can move on. <laughs> I was going to say, you're talking to the Godzilla lover uh, <laughs> of all hey, Godzilla Kong lovers. Can get an, Kong's adventures in the in the Upside Down can get their, their own movie without Godzilla in it. I, oh, that's another really cool moment when they're going through. When they're what? Oh, when they're going through to the, the, the tunnel thing. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Thank God they had those machines that they developed without ever having any kind of sample of that gravitation. Right. <laughs> science. That's wh- whenever whenever you have a plot hole, just say science, and then uh, science works itself out. Works for me, man. All right. So now, I'm, I, if ten dollars full price of admission, what do you give uh, Godzilla versus Kong? John, you can go last because I know you're probably going to be with the most ridiculous score. Amanda, eight fifty. Wow, I give it seven fifty. John? I gave it eight bucks. I'm stunned. What? Did you just drop Should it? Should I lower I my that? score? <laughs> I think so. No, it, it you know, it it's a fun movie. It's a it's it's awesome. There is like we talked about like the little things back and forth about where there could have been some corrections and there's if it's got corrections that could have been made, then they have to be addressed. And I'm addressing them with eight dollars as opposed to saying like it's a nine or a ten or anything like that. But you will watch it all the time, I'm guessing. I actually already have it queued up in my TV in the other room, so I can. Because I, I hurt my back when I was working out this morning, so I gotta actually lay on a heating pad for a little bit. So yeah, I gotta. I'm, I'm gonna watch it right now. All right. Well, before we head out, before we're done, I want to kind of discuss because we all saw this in a movie theater, even though it is on HBO Max as well. Wherever you watch it, fine. We watched it all in a theater, and we had different experiences. So I'm kind of just curious what your experience was and your thoughts walking out of the theater of that experience, Amanda, since movie theaters haven't really been a big talking point as of late. Yeah, I was so happy that I saw this in theaters. I actually drove a little ways so that way I could see it in AMC's Dolby experience, which is not full IMAX, but the screen is massive and the the room is just completely blacked out and you have reclining seats and the sound is incredible and you have vibrating seats. I mean, it's just, it's the perfect way to see a movie like this. And I had middle center seats. And so it was perfect. And I've already seen at least part of it at home. And I do have a really nice TV and, and surround sound and all that stuff. And even though this is still a cool way to experience it, as we were rewatching it, I was like, man, I am so glad that I saw this in the theater because yep. I just cannot imagine not seeing this there because I didn't get the full effect of the kaiju monsters at home that I got in the theater. Like, I want to go see this again in the movie theater. Yeah, I saw it in a theater and I saw the same thing. I I rewatched it last night just to get ready for this, just to make sure, you know, all those fine story points I was clear on, um, which I still missed apparently the pulsating thing that John was talking about. But (laughs) <laughs> the uh, but rewatch it just it just didn't compare for me personally. So it was um, I'm glad I saw this one. Like this is a theater movie. If you can and you feel safe, this is a movie theater movie. Now, John, what about you? Because this is literally your most anticipated thing in forever. Yeah, I went actually. You know, my day started off by uh, going to get my first shot, my first COVID shot. So. Uh, I got my first COVID shot, waited around a couple minutes, then I took off directly to the theater, and it's my, and it's the theater that I talked about that I love going to, the one that actually serves a meal while, uh, just before the movie starts, and the food is always amazing when I go eat there, and you know I walked in, and my last couple of movie experiences, I didn't, 
I felt kind of skeeved out because I didn't feel like the places were as clean as they were promising them they would be. But when I walked into this place for the first time in an over a year, I, I could actually still smell the cleaner in the air when I walked into the theater. You could smell the bleach. When I, mm, bleach. When I, the bleach. <laughs> when I got to my my seat. The thing that I thought was interesting was they they apparently use steam on every one of these leather recliner seats, and they've used so much steam on them since they've been op- open again. And, uh, and then they told me they opened back up in October that they're, it's actually destroying the leather seats a bit. So you can actually see that. And I and though it didn't look pretty, it's still comfortable to sit on, and I still felt it's you can still smell how clean it is so i felt that was a a good touch and again i can't imagine seeing this for the first time on a tv screen this movie needed to be huge it needed to be in front of you to a degree in which you have to actually turn your head to see everything and i can't you know i can't say it more go to the theater to see this one yeah i I actually want to go back see it in imax just because i want to see realistic interpretations of these monsters i want to see like yeah how big would you oh that big that's so big (laughs) that's what she said (laughs) fair (laughs) fair and uh, i kept waiting for one of them to go to the bathroom i'm like this is gonna be so massive for somebody but they never did i'm like i feel like that's another missed opportunity what are you gonna do maybe they peed in the ocean you don't know well you know godzilla did he doesn't care he's a god he probably pissed in Hong Kong while they were fighting. <laughs> right. Read on that building. They got King Kong scratching his ass. From? His penile oh. area? He's a, he's a giant lizard. It's all tucked up inside of him. <laughs> he's but an does it, is it more by the tail <laughs> or is ninny. it like front on the belly area? This is way too involved. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of The Hollywood Outsider. Share your thoughts on this episode or anything else on our site uh, at thehollywoodoutsider.com. You can go to our Facebook group, The Hollywood Outsider. We're on Twitter, at Buy Popcorn. And our email is feedback at thehollywoodoutsider.com. Podcast is available in every podcast app you use, including Spotify and Pandora and Apple Podcasts, etc. So thanks for listening. And remember, the next time you go to a theater to see Godzilla versus Kong, buy popcorn. Oh my God, we got so much popcorn. <laughs> Yeah, we got so much popcorn. We got we got we got to the theater early, and we got ordered some popcorn to have with our drinks. And then we took that popcorn into the theater, and then they refilled it for us with even more popcorn and more butter. Mm. I was so full, it hurt. That sounds like <laughs> not a well night's sleep. A lot of butter and popcorn. <laughs> Good night, everybody. It's just like rawr. <laughs> what, what was that? <laughs> That was that's your monkey. That's my yeah. That's my con. Your ape. Yeah. <laughs> monkey. See, that's better. You. I want to meet the guy me. who has to who's paid to do that. I want to meet the guy who's like, all right, Billy. Here's what we need you to do. What's it say on the page? Ooh, 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 ooh. All right. So what what does that mean? It doesn't mean under what it means. All right. It just mean, it means home. Don't judge because one of my favorite things is the emotion they had for his responses where he would like whine and whimper a little bit and you could hear his sadness like whoever did his noises did a wonderful job. I'm not knocking him. I want to meet the guy. I think it's great that that's going on his job application at some point. I dig Kong noises.